Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Bayer-Wittlinger oxidation, which is a reaction of aldehydes and ketones with some sort of peroxy carboxylic acid. Uh, and the outcome of this reaction is an ester. I'm just going to start off talking about the, the basics of the reaction and present its mechanism. I'm going to use acetone uh, as uh, my ketone for this video. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to predict the outcome with different kinds of aldehydes and ketones. Right. Uh, peroxy acids, uh, we've only ever seen them one other you know, place in, in organic chemistry, and that is in the conversion of alkenes uh, to oxides. So these are not uh, these are not reagents that necessarily have a whole lot of other things that they do. That's good. Um, and, you know, a variety of peroxy acids can be used. Peroxy acetic acids or, or as methyl. Um, but in general, uh, the, favored, uh, the favored compound here is metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. MCPBA. MCPBA equals meta chloroperoxy benzoic acid. Right, so this. Um, and the structure of metachloroperoxy benzoic acid. I'm sorry for the pause there. Here is metachlorobenzoic acid, uh, and the peroxy benzoic acid has an additional OH attached there. When I'm drawing the mechanism, I'm just going to use R. But uh, again, one of the reasons metachloroperoxy benzoic acid is used is that uh, it happens to be a solid at room temperature, which makes it easier to handle. From a mechanism, this mechanism is really interesting. It's got a it's got an interesting rearrangement step in it, um, so so that's kind of cool. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about this mechanism, and and this mechanism actually this reaction works equally well in sort of acid and base, um, so it's it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm going to just draw for you the the acidic version. Um, And by acidic version, I don't necessarily mean that there's going to be a proton transfer to the carbonyl group. Um, peroxy acids are much less acidic than the original carboxylic acids because uh, the negative charge that would form here is not at all resonance stabilized. So we actually have nucleophilic attack directly on the uh, carbonyl group. And I, let's see, I want to try to to represent this in a specific way to make things a little bit more helpful here. Oxygen, carbonyl oxygen, hydrogen. There we go. Oh, and, and so I said I was going to use R for use R. And I've got a negative charge here and a positive charge here. Now, what is going to happen is instead of any sort of proton transfer, or is this going to want to shift? The, the back in to form a pi bond, but instead of kicking off this thing as a leaving group, because the, the good leaving group that's present here is actually this other part of the ester. Um, we're going to have a methyl shift at the same time. 
and the oxygen-oxygen single bond, which is pretty weak, is going to break. And we're going to end up having the carbonyl group carbon oxygen pi bond grabbing that hydrogen and these electrons shifting in. So it looks like we've got a whole bunch of stuff going around in the circle. And if you've seen the mechanism for the uh, formation of an epoxide, it, it's actually got some similarities, except this has this rearrangement step in it. And so here we go. Methyl acetate and the the carboxylic acid as byproduct. Here is uh, the mechanism. If this was done in base. We wouldn't have this extra proton transfer step in here, uh, but otherwise it would be really really similar. Um, so this is the mechanism of the Bayer-Willinger oxidation. In the next video. We'll talk about uh, um, what happens if the molecule is not symmetric because there are different kinds of products that might form. Right? Thank you for watching.